Hi, my name is Amberly, and I have the privilege of serving as one of our executive pastors here at Transformation Church. We just want to say thank you so much for tuning in from wherever you are watching from. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. We believe that God has a word for you. So let's jump into this amazing message. Um, I was going to end the series this week. And then the Holy Spirit said, I didn't tell you to end it. And I was like, cool. So what? <laughs> so I'm done. <laughs> but <laughs> what you want to do? And um, he said, you're going to take this series two more weeks. And, and, and he, you're going to take it through Easter. I thought I was going to do a, a different message for Easter. He said, the, the title for the Easter message on Sunday morning is Fresh Start. And I said, God, what are you talking about? He said, my ending was everybody's fresh start. I said, when I said it's finished, he actually gave everybody an opportunity for a fresh start. I said, God, that's good. I, I, you know what? You better than me. And, and then he said the week after that, and I feel a little intimidated saying this, but because I don't got the full message together, but the Holy Spirit told me to say it. The week after Easter, he told me to preach a message called Fresh Faith. And I ain't about to act like I know what that's about yet. But the, the little bit that God told me, he said, your, your, your relationship with failure determines your relationship with faith. He said, so many people don't see what they want in faith because they're scared to fail. <laughs> he said, but a righteous man falls seven times. But what does he do? Get back. I, I, I don't fully know what that is yet, but it's cooking. But today, I, I felt that I had to give you a core ingredient to make all of this fresh fruit stuff actually work. Like, like all year we are declaring what God said over our church prophetically that this would be a year of fruit, but it wouldn't just be a year of fruit that gets stale. Like it wouldn't be peace that we had in April, but by October we frantic and in, in living in anxiety again, the seasonal peace, the seasonal love, the seasonal awareness of kindness, God said, you don't have to be like that. In Psalms, it says you could be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water, bearing fruit in every season. Like your leaves never with like, I want to live like that. And he said, that means you don't just need fruit. You need fresh fruit. Somebody say fresh fruit. So today in week seven of fresh fruit, God told me very specifically, he said, Michael, give him the title at the top of the message, write it down. Today, I'm going to teach you how to have fresh faith. Because most people don't see fresh fruit because they don't have fresh faith. You living off of faith of an old season, trying to ask God to do a brand new thing with crusty faith. You're asking God for a new revelation with molded faith. And God's saying it's not going to work because faith is literally the gasoline to the entire Christian life. How do you get saved? By faith. He literally said, without faith, it's impossible to please me. Not because you're a bad person, because you can't do this Christian life without faith. And if you want to please God, you got to obey him. You can't obey him without and faith begins, watch this, where understanding ends. And most people, where your understanding ends, you end. Think about it. You stop walking, you stop talking, you stop believing. This doesn't make sense. And you're like, all right, God, come get me when it makes sense. And some of y'all have been at 1987 waiting for God to come pick you up. i just waiting on God. That is the dumbest statement. Because people are like, I'm just waiting on God. He is waiting on you. I promise you there is something in the instruction that you have not done to 100%. I'm like, well, God, I asked the one person. He said, ask 10. 
And you thought because you asked one, I did what you said. You partially did what I said. So partial obedience is what? Disobedience. Would you get a fresh faith? And this message is for not just new believers. This is for believers who have been toiling, working, persevering for years. That I believe that God by his spirit in this message through his word is going to give you a fresh faith to be able to believe him again. Because some of us, the truth of the matter is, we saw God do something in one season and we got tired of what it took to see that thing happen. And so it's kind of like, Lord, if you want to do it again, do it without me. Don't act like you're not, you're not here with me. Because so many times you'll be in one season. I gave in crazy faith. I did it in crazy faith. I moved in crazy faith. I did all this other stuff. And now God asks you just to go talk to your neighbor. You move from another coast of the country and now you can't move across the street it's because you need a fresh faith so today i'm gonna walk you through it because i believe this is one of the things i was talking to some of my friends earlier before service i said i feel like faith and having a fresh faith is one of the unique giftings that god has allowed me to understand i'm always believing god for what is next If you catch me on a Tuesday or a Thursday or after a bad day, you can ask the people that walk with me. They be like, Mike, how you doing? I'm here today and I'm believing God's going to do something crazy. Why do you you just lost something, but God's about to do something. Why would I focus on losing when I serve the God who can do everything? And today I want to give you, I believe, four keys to keeping a fresh faith. And I found the, this story in 2 King 18, and I want you to turn to it. And this is about Elijah, and I'll, I'll give you some context in a minute, but I'm just going to read it. So Ahab went off to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel. He bent down to the ground and put his face between his knees to pray. Go and look towards the sea, he told his servant. And he w- went up and looked. The servant said, um, there's nothing there. He said, seven times Elijah said, go back. Somebody said, go back. (laughs) Say it with faith. Go back. The seventh time the servant reported, um, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. That is nasty Bible. And for most people, they're like, I missed it. (laughs) What what just happened? Let me give you some context right now. Um, This man of God is just coming off of one of the greatest victories that has ever been seen in the world at this moment. Y'all remember the story of the prophet of Baals where there was 400 prophets that believed in Baal and then there was Elijah and he said, hey, if God be God, like, Let's see, let's have uh, verses right now. Y'all remember the verses battles where artists would come to He was like, let's have a biblical verses. And he said, it can be 400 of y'all on this side and y'all put out the bull and then ask your God to answer and then I'm going to put out the bull and I ain't going to be on the bull because God's going to actually answer me. And they cutting themselves, doing all of these different things and calling out to Baal he never answered. Elijah gets gangster with him. He says, throw water on the sacrifice. Do it again. Do another one. He did it three times. Because you know, water is supposed to quench the fire. And then he just prays to God. Boom. Lights up the fire. Everybody like, oh my God. Literally. <laughs> and they all start serving the God of Elijah. <laughs> you just got it. It's like, ah, ah. <laughs> so, so watch while everybody's celebrating while everybody's turning up what does this man of God do he said as Ahab the king went to eat and drink Elijah climbed to a secret place on Mount Carmel he bent down to the ground and put his face between his knees to pray 
How do I keep fresh faith? Number one, you have to get a fresh perspective. And let me go ahead and just help you with this. You get a fresh perspective in the presence of God. Elijah had an opportunity to go party with the king and he chose to pray. What do you do at the point of your answered prayer? What do you do when you actually win the victory? What do you do after the platform expands? Most people go party when you need to go pray. Because when God expands your platform, the truth of the matter is you didn't get yourself there. And what we will do many times is start walking in pride after our platform expands. And you think I'm talking about this platform, but your platform as a parent, you go from no kids to one kid, you have a brand new platform. And many times you don't pray the same way you prayed to have a kid after you have the kid. God, if you would just touch my womb, if you would just give me, Father, if you would just, and now they hear and you're like, shit your butt down. I'm going to beat your butt. Oh, Lord, help me not kill him. That's your prayer? Your platform expanded, but you forgot about the presence. And what I am learning to keep a fresh faith that when God expands your platform, when he gives you the promotion, when you get one more person on your team, when you become the president of the PTA, when God allows you to expand in any moment, will you get on your knees in a secret place and posture yourself in a place of God, I can't do this without you. Father God, I know the victory that everybody's celebrating. I know that wasn't me. God, I need you to answer me again. What's next? Who do I hire? Who do I let go? Who do I transition? Father God, where should I live? I got the opportunity to go. I got the money to do whatever, God. But I will not move without you. Father, give me a fresh perspective. And the problem is, that many people will not take that posture after a win. How do you keep fresh faith? You don't act like that what God did, you did. <laughs> Most people after what God has done in this church would start a podcast about how to grow your church. Okay, let me stop. After what God's done here, most people that have experienced what God has done here would start a master class on how to expand your influence. The reason I can't do that, I don't got time to. Because my posture is God, I don't know what to do with all of this. If you would just speak one more time, and somebody's like, why does he keep getting in that position? Because the posture of prayer is vulnerable. And most of you are so concerned about how you look to people that you won't get in the posture that got you to the place that God has you right now. And other people are so worried about how does it look to people. I don't care how it looks to you. When God is the one who orders my steps, I have to stay in the place that he tells me to stay to get the perspective and the instructions that only he can give. How do you keep a fresh faith? You have to have a new posture. If God expands your platform, don't leave his presence. Most people, the song blows up. And the next time you hear about God is when they're accepting an award in a thong. Oh, no. They're in a thong on a platform in front of thousands of people. I'm like, first off, I would like to give thanks to God for... No, come on, y'all. Y'all see it every... The craziest thing is we talk about people that may be far from God doing that, but the truth of the matter, it happens in the church every day. Now you're the leader over the greeters. And pride just creeps in. There's no more presence. You used to be kind. That's why you got the position. And now you're mean because you work with so many people that they come to me with all their problems. That's what a leader is. It's a person that solves the problems. I'm just all of these people and all these different answers and everybody asking for <laughs> and 
and you didn't go back to the presence to get a, watch this, fresh perspective. If you're going to keep your faith fresh, you got to see it differently. Trials become training with a fresh perspective. The trials you're going through, this is just training. This is God preparing me for something, but you will take a season that will make you lethal in another season, and you will count it as something that you have to hate and endure because you have the wrong perspective. Do you know what all of this media attention has trained me to do? Is develop the skin that can be able to handle adversity at a level that is uncommon to church. And I said, God, why did you do this? And I told y'all last week, there are things that are happening in the pipeline that are gonna put us into culture to be able to bring people into the kingdom that my skin wasn't ready for two years ago. So if I saw this last two years as just something that I have to endure and I'm persecuted and done, no, it was training. The perspective changes the pain. Oh my gosh. If I'm going into the doctor and they say it's going to hurt, but it's going to heal you. Because they give you the perspective that you will be able to walk in another level of healing. The pain changes because of the perspective. Okay. It is preaching, Mama Chloe. And my, my question to you today is, did the platform kill your posture? Did the promotion kill your posture? I know people that were great volunteers, servant leaders, and they got a job and became trash. Like, I, I, it, it baffles me how people were killing it with a whole nother job. And then you start paying them to do it, and they just become horrible. Not, and it's not because they changed, their posture did. Did the answered prayer request change your posture? Because if your only relation to Christ is crisis, you, you, when there's no crisis, your posture changes. See, this is why I got to break this theology that the only time we come to God is when we are in need. The church has thrived on that toxic mentality, so it just draws broke people. What happens when we get rich? People walk away from the faith because all we've taught them is to be with God when you need God. Okay, I can't even touch this. I wrote it down in a point so I could be succinct. If crisis is the only thing that brings you to Christ, you are missing the value he brings after victory. The reason why Elijah goes to pray is because he just in front of the whole nation wins the biggest victory, 400 against one. God answers by fire. Salvations are coming in and my man says, can't party, gotta go get perspective. Because if I listen to what y'all saying, your praises can throw me off as well as your criticism. So I'm gonna go talk to the one who actually called me to this. I just want us to see that it's okay to come to God after victory. That is the posture of keeping a fresh faith. Somebody say fresh faith. fresh faith. And Elijah kept this posture that remembered the promise that God had given him. Now watch this. Because if you're going to have a fresh faith, somebody say fresh faith. fresh faith. Number two, you need to keep a fresh reminder. The reason I, I believe what God says daily is because I am always reminded of what God said and what he's already done. Okay. Let's be hot, humble, open, and transparent. Has anybody in the last two years had God show up in a way that blew you away? Like in just any area of your life. He did something that was like, whoa! How often do you think about it? Somebody said every day and other people was like, I just remember when you said that. 
If you want to keep fresh faith, you have to always keep before you a fresh reminder. Some of y'all need to put a picture on the refrigerator of the apartment you used to live in. Because you're complaining about the expense. I always got to clean this house by myself. Ain't nobody want to help me. And, nobody, and God's like, hold on now. This extra square footage is what you prayed for. This is an answer prayer. Well, I, I mean, I'm doing this Bible study and nobody coming. I'll be putting my little graphics from Canva up there and ain't nobody, ain't nobody doing this. Hold on, you ask for me to give you discipline. And so now you mad because nobody's showing up, but the discipline is not found in the results. The discipline is found in the obedience. And you mad because ain't nobody coming, but you asked for this. Some of us need to literally get our phones out and set reminders. You prayed for this. You asked me to give you this level of understanding. You asked me to be a light to my family. God, if you would just change me enough that I could be a light to my family. He said, yeah, you're going to have to shine where it's dark. Why well, hate going home for holidays? Because you're the only light in that darkness. You asked for this. And without that reminder, you don't have fresh faith to believe that God can work in that situation. You become frustrated where you should have faith. Okay. How do you know this, Pastor Mike? Because we're all the way down here in, in 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 42. But in verse 1, God gave Elijah a promise. Let me show it to you. 1 Kings 18, verse 1. After a long time. After how long? A long time. After how long? Okay, I just want to make sure we know it was after a long time. In the third year, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. It didn't come to a group of people. It didn't come to a family. It didn't come to a word. It didn't come to a small group. It came to him. In a famine, it says, go and present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the land. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab. Now the famine was severe in Samaria. I like the setting of faith because the setting of faith is opposite than what you see. Oh God. Everybody's trying to see what God said. He's going to say what he sees and then you have to act like you see it. I just, that is a bar. You missed it. Cause some, you want God show me. He said, no, I said it. I said it, now you got to act like you see it, move like you see it, talk like you see it, believe like you see it, bring people into the vision like you see it. I said it, now you act like you see it. If he, if he, if you see it, it's easy for you to say it. That's common sense. If it's raining and he said it's going to rain, you'd be like, oh yeah, it's raining. But if it's a famine and he says, get up and go tell somebody I'm about to send rain. Lord, the setting is completely opposite of what you are saying. He said, but when I say it, things begin to change. I'm just looking for a partner with faith to believe that what I said is signed, sealed and delivered. I feel a Stevie Wonder anointing coming on me right now. I'm telling you that if you can believe what you don't see, that is the breeding ground for God to do what he said. Okay. Oh, I might have to work this for a couple weeks because y'all sitting here looking at me like you just drank lemon juice. I need to hear. I need you to hear. Oh, that's what it is. Many of us believe the lie when it's dry. When there's a famine, when there's no money, when the relationship is cold, when the, we believe the lies of the enemy when it's dry. But this is what gets God glory. He speaks something into nothing. 
Can we go back to creation? In the beginning, what was there? The Bible says there was a void, emptiness, darkness. And he did not, he did not show them a PowerPoint presentation of what he was about to make. And the Bible says, and he said, let. Whatever happened after let happened. Because his word is that powerful. I came to get somebody to get a fresh perspective and a fresh reminder of the word God spoke over you. It can be completely contrary to what you are seeing right now. Your family can be so scattered, believe in all kinds of stuff, but God gave you a world that your family would serve God together. And right now, you have stopped praying for it. You've stopped inviting them. You've stopped sending messages. You've stopped because your faith has waned. And I get it. When you haven't seen anything in a long time, it makes you kind of back up off of it because you don't want to feel crazy. But I know that there are a few people under the sound of my voice that need to have fresh faith today. That if God said it, and I'm not going to convince you, Today, I'm just telling you how to keep your faith, faith fresh. <laughs> if you had an important meeting with the top person in your um, field tomorrow, and you just found out about it in service right now, and this meeting had the opportunity to change the course of your life at the tune of eight figures, some of y'all, that just blew your mind, just the thought of eight figures. You didn't know how much money that is. <laughs> just, I'm just giving you a hypothetical. But the only thing about this person is they had to fly out of the city at 8 a.m., so the meeting had to be at 5 a.m. in the morning. And you're not a morning person. Somebody said, I am today. <laughs> what would you do to ensure that you got up for that meeting. How, somebody said, set an alarm. How many alarms would you set? What would you say? Somebody said, all of them. <laughs> you set the house alarm, the car alarm. You, you, okay. now, now, now think about it. Why would you have to set the alarm as a reminder? And, and some of y'all, y'all would go further than that. Y'all would tell somebody. Hey, listen, call me. Y'all know, hey, 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 call me at 4 a.m. If I don't answer by 4.15, get in your car. Some of y'all know, come to my house, beat on the door. If I don't answer the door, go to my window. You would be so intentional about being reminded because of the potential of what could change your life. Do you know at the word of God that he spoke over you before you were in your mother's womb? Some of y'all need to be reminded that he said before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you, I called you, I had plans for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future and you won't remind yourself of it. A matter of fact, you don't have a tribe that will remind you of it. Most of y'all got tribes, people, oh, them are my dogs, that's my girls, that's my besties. I... You doing all these dumb things, but they won't, they won't remind you that you're worth more than dating him. You remember the promise that God gave you? That you would be a woman that would be valued and cherished and taken care of? And he won't even claim you in the daytime? But they jealous that he not <laughs> with them. And so they'll let you stay in foolishness. 
I'm, I'm just saying like business partners that won't deal in integrity to make sure that we get up. And then once we get to this certain level, then we'll start being integrous. No, you won't. You're practicing dysfunction. And many of our tribes won't remind us we're people of integrity. No, 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 bro. We can't do it like that. No, we're going to lose in this first round. We're not going to make no money, but we will have the blessing of God. Oh, God. Somebody say fresh faith. Fresh faith. Uh, the reason that everybody needs to get in a tribe and tribes are open today and, and they're open. And somebody's like, they are? Yes. We did a whole video announcement. I did everything. Where was you at? <laughs> but, but we want everybody in this church in a tribe. I don't want you to just come to this big yeah. gathering because I can talk to you, but you can't talk to me right now. Yeah. So some of you need to say something back. And, and, and in this form, it's not the place, but there is a tribe where, Pastor Mike, what does it mean? All, we're, all we are is together, talking, and transparent. Yeah. We have taken out all the things like somebody about to teach me about. No, 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 no. There is something spiritual that happened in Acts 2.42 when people got together around food, cookies, chips, barbecue. And they just started sharing life together. How was your week, bro? I almost snapped on that person at work today. Did you snap? I did hit him. I hit him. <laughs> Come on, where'd you get me? I, I, I slapped him. Open handed. And I don't do that. That was better than the punch. And so what I want to say, y'all, is I made progress. And, 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 and you need a tribe that will be like, all right. Okay. All right. <laughs> Where's the root of that, bro? Bro, I've always been a fighter. I just feel like nobody will take up for me. And so at the moment where somebody disrespects me, like I ain't going to be disrespected. Come on. Hey, today, bro, we're not going to try to fix it. We're just going to pray that God gives you a, a, a peace that passes the understanding when you find yourself in that situation. Anybody else going through something? Bro, I, bro, I was looking at boobs all week. Oh, y'all. Okay. Oh, y'all want to be fake? Because some of your marriages will be held together if there is a place that some of these people can actually say what they've been doing. The church, I, did y'all feel the booties get tight? Oh my goodness. Y'all want to be fake. It's not full on pornography, but in my head, what I've seen on the Explorer page, everybody working out. Why are you working out like that? What is that working out? Hey, bro. There's this app that can um, let us know if you ever go to a website that's, that's illegal for the type of men of integrity we're supposed to be. Would you be down to share this with a couple of us? Bro, I'll try. And we're going to hit you up. Like, all right? Yeah. <sighs> Where else? Where else are you going to find as a 35-year-old grown man where you can do whatever you want? Nobody's going to force you to do this, and your wife is tired of asking you. She can't stand that she knows their secrets, and she feels them every time you lay in the bed with her. But you won't get in a tribe of people who will actually tell you the truth and be able to say, I used to deal with the same thing. And they remind you of what God's brought them from and what he's brought them to. And I'm using a male. Somebody's pulling on me right there, but it's for all of us. If you want to have a fresh faith, you may need to get in a place where faith is reminded. That's why I come to church. It's because my faith gets reminded in this building. I don't get to stay in the doubt and the depression. It's not that I don't have it. It's just I don't get to stay there when I start to look at destiny. Being up here worshiping God after having cancer. When I look at Osby up here leading worship. When they said his baby would have to have a tube in her throat. And three weeks ago that thing was taken out. When I... 
y'all, it gives me fresh perspective. Somebody say fresh faith. Okay, here we go. We're about to end this. To have fresh faith, this is the one I love. You got to have a fresh expectation. And when I look at this story, I find the fresh expectation. See, see, because remember, you got to get a fresh perspective that comes in the presence of God through prayer. Then you have to have fresh reminders. What did God say? But then when you remember what he said, then you got to act like he going to do it. And some of y'all remember what God says and then act like he is going to do the exact opposite. Like he's going to leave you hanging. And it's so crazy to watch people tell other people to believe who don't believe. Wow. Like, like, like. When you get a fresh expectation, it makes you do things differently. Look at it, 2 Kings verse 18, um, uh, I mean, chapter 18, verse 43. He tells the servant, go and look towards the sea. And the servant, watch this, he went and looked. Now, put yourself in the place of the servant real quick. It's a drought. It's dry everywhere. Clouds just beautiful. Sun just shining. It's hot. Lord, what do you want me to do? It's about to rain. Okay. Okay, so what you want me to do? Send your servant to move from the place that he's in right now and go look, because it's about to rain. There's sky over me right now. Why would I have to move to see if it's going to rain? Tell him to go and look to see if it's going to rain. Hey, servant. Uh, I know you saw the prophet of Baal thing. God really <laughs> did his thing back there, didn't he? He killed it, huh? Fire, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Go look and see if you see any rain clouds. Because the Holy Spirit just told me it's about to rain. Now, depending on the perspective of this servant, depending on how this servant moves in faith, this story goes a lot of different ways. Go look. This servant literally does it. It says, and he went. Well, let me go see if there's some rain back here. Let me see if it's a cloud. Oh, praise and praise and praise and praise and praise and praise. <clears throat> I did what he said. Elijah! I ain't seen nothing. Did what you said. I ain't seen nothing. Elijah, go back. God, go back. I just went. I just made a faith step. I just used the energy. I just used my money. Go back. Let me go see what he's talking about. Yeah, the is not there. I'm gonna count my steps. Liza! Nothing, man. Go back. Now, okay. <laughs> this is where most of us. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, God. I did what you said twice. I ain't seeing nothing. And it almost feels disrespectful at this point. No, come on. That you would ask me. You're God, right? You know where the rain is and when it's coming. Why would you tell me to go back 
and you know ain't nothing computer. Maybe it's not about the rain at this point. Maybe it's about the attitude, disposition, and expectation of the person. At some point, this servant had to get the attitude of expectation. They're like, hey, man, if he going to keep telling me to go back, maybe this will be the time. I'm expecting something's going to happen. Time three. Well, maybe third time's the charm. Darn. Third time is not a charm. Elijah, not four times, five times, six times. Go and look towards the sea, he told his servant, and he went up and looked. There is nothing there, he said. Write this down. Nothing is the perfect breeding ground for something. Most people look at nothing and get discouraged. But people with fresh faith look at nothing and say, "Uh uh-oh, this is tons of space for something. That's the attitude of expectation that you got to get again. No, no, there's no prospects for me to be married. This is a lot of room for God to bring him. (laughs) See, you've lost your expectation. And when you lose your expectation, what creeps in is, watch this, complacency. The servant just walking around, you know it ain't about to rain. But he got me over here all the time. I see, I keep seeing it ain't going to rain. It ain't rain for the the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time, or the sixth time. But what would happen if everybody, every time that God told you to do something, every day that you woke up, every day that God gave you another opportunity, is like, maybe today is the day. Oh my goodness, another opportunity for me to see if it's about to rain. Matter of fact, where are my rain boots? Matter of fact, where's my umbrella? See, some of y'all missed it. I sleep with my umbrella and my rain boots next to me because I've gone six times and there was nothing. I'm not going to deny the fact that I keep trying this thing and ain't nothing happened. But if God... Oh my God. I'm going to have to do a whole nother faith series. It's been too long since crazy faith because some of y'all have lost the ability to believe what God said. Go back again. Somebody shout at me. Go back. Go back to the bank. Go back to the book. Go back to that elementary school that you know you're supposed to help turn around. I know they denied you before, but God is saying to somebody, go And on the second time, my man was like, well, I guess today is the day because I'm full of expectation. Wasn't nothing yesterday, but today it could be something. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Is that? Elijah! Elijah! Elijah, Elijah! Watch the communication of expectation. This could be nothing. But, ah, I love, okay, hold on. This actually could not really have much to do with what I'm supposed to do, but I see a cloud the size of a man's hand rising from the sea. What the servant was saying is, it's not much, but I see something. Oh, that is the communication of faith. My relationship hasn't turned all the way around, but I see something. Some of y'all need to start. My money has not totally flipped. But how I'm thinking about it, I see 
something. This church is not where it's gonna be, but what's happening right now? I see something. Somebody shout at me, I see something. And many of you, the enemy would try to make you discount what you see. It ain't the rain yet. But it's something. Oh, God. Somebody say it's something. Your family's not healed. But they text you back. It's something. Oh, where are the people with faith? This building ain't filled yet. But it's almost to the back of the building. It's something. I don't need everybody. But I need about 300 people to say I will not discount what God has shown me. Somebody say, I see something. Most people would discount that little cloud. But because that servant, do y'all realize Elijah wasn't going to see it? His act of faith was based on who was around him. Why do you need a tribe? You need somebody to be able to look at your life and say, hold on. You, you about to discount that? No, 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 baby, we see something. You're a leader, you're an owner. God has made you to be able to turn that situation. I see This servant comes back with expectation. So I see your family being free. I see you getting healthy. Boy, you, you lost four pounds and four pounds came. I look at you. I see something. I see you being able to fit in skinny jeans. You better get the right people around you. Because watch, Elijah's response is based on what somebody else saw. Oh God, I don't got time to go into this. Oh, but... Somebody say, I see something. <laughs> so now the fresh faith is at an all-time high. We're about to go. Last point. To keep fresh faith, watch this. You have to have fresh, watch this, anticipation. There's a difference between expectation and anticipation. Most people, when they see the little cloud, they're like, oh my God, God did it. He did what he said he's going to do. Wow, this is great. Elijah must mean it's gonna rain. And then we wait, let's wait on the rain. Do y'all see what Elijah does in this story? He tells them he sees something. And listen, let me just tell you what anticipation means. Cause some of y'all are like, what's the difference between expectation and anticipation? Anticipation means it's a realization in advance. It's a foretaste. You ever ate a meal that's so consistent and so good that when you make up in your mind, I'm going to eat at that place, your body starts foretasting it? Y'all not, now, some of y'all don't eat good, but there are certain meals, saliva comes out of your mouth. You, you start juicing up because you're like, oh God, I'm going to get some of that. It's because, <laughs> some of y'all like, I feel it right now. <laughs> but, but it's because, watch, your body is now anticipating what you know is about to happen. So Elijah, at, the, at, at something, at the, cl the, the, the cloud the size of a man's hand, remember the promise is rain. He doesn't see rain, he sees a cloud. Will you shout over the cloud? You missed it. Will you? How you start acting after the cloud proves you have faith. Y'all want the rain. You want the drip, drop, drip, drippity, drop. That's what you want. And he ain't going to give you the rain. He's going to give you a cloud. And now he wants to know, do you got faith now? 
You got fresh faith? Watch Elijah's faith. When he heard it, he said, Elijah said, go tell Ahab, hitch up his chariots and go down before the rain stops him. Do y'all see how big that faith is? I just seen a cloud. Tell them it's time to, it's time to go. Because if he don't go now, the level of rain that's coming will stop him from moving forward. Oh! All I saw was a cloud, but I got fresh to faith to believe it's about to rain. And it's gonna rain at a level that will stop you if you don't move now. What Elijah was doing was anticipating the word of God. Where's Fee? Is Fee here? Come here. Uh, I, I, I want you to, to be very clear about anticipating. Because expectation is great. But I want Transformation Church to live at anticipation. This is my real little brother, Fee, okay? So, so if I told Fee, hey, I'm about to knock you out. Now, now, I want you to see what just happened. I want you to see what just happened. At my word, his entire posture, because he's seen what I've done to my other brothers. <laughs> he, he knows. He knows my track record. The power of my words changed his posture. I don't know what, I don't know where you a gangster, bro. What you trying to do, bro? I'm just here. I'm just, look at. And if my mere word, he's never seen me knock anybody out. He's never seen me in a fight. But because my word changed his posture he's anticipating <laughs> will the word of God change how you posture yourself in this next season because I haven't done anything to him yet. But he's anticipating. Watch this. Anticipation is the proof of expectation. When I said, I'm gonna I'm knock you out, Fee. His hands changed. Give me a hug, Fee. <laughs> Give me a hug, okay? He believed that. Now I'm gonna knock you out, okay? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> he, hear, hear what I'm saying. Fee's not just expecting me to hit him. He's walking towards me. Man. He said, stop walking towards me, man. <laughs> He's not just expecting me to hit him. He's in. Did you? How, how is it that God has told you nine times what he's going to do and it hasn't changed your posture yet? This is the words of a mere man that can't even really fight. I'm going to shoot you before I've ever fought. I'm just being honest. We're not about to be tussled. about. I'm, no, I'm just. <laughs> I got shooters all around me. Hear me. No, I'm just playing. No, I'm not. I, <laughs> no, I'm not. I, what, what I'm saying to you is, what, what I'm saying to you is, at my mere word, he's anticipating. But at the word of God, you're still sitting. You ain't open the bank account. You ain't take no meaning. You won't read a book. You won't get in your word. 
You won't relocate to the part of town God's called you to actually minister in. You won't, you won't do nothing. You don't expect God to do it. Because if you did, you would start anticipating it. Ephesians 3.20. If you really believed it, it would change the way you live today. Now unto him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask, think, or imagine according to not our power, but his power that is at work within. Why is he choosing to use me? But he still is. To him be all glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. I told you I was going to knock. Mama said, knock you out. Okay, now, what I'm telling you is every movement that I make, he's moving. Why are you holding me so hard, baby? Just ready, man. He said, I'm just, watch this, ready, man. If we could ever get a church who was ready for a harvest, y'all not even ready for what's about to happen next week. You're not even ready for the person you hate to show up sitting right next to you. You're not even ready for that boss that you're praying away actually coming to know Jesus. You're not anticipating God doing a revival in your school and in your church. Thank you, Phoebe. If you actually were ready, Great. you would anticipate it. Great. Great. How do you keep fresh faith? I'm anticipating. Yes, Even when it specifically comes to Easter, yeah. who are you inviting? Yeah. An anticipation for what God could do in their life. You don't anticipate because you won't even tell nobody. You won't even post about it because it'll mess up your aesthetic. Well, I just want to keep the right image for my followers. Your followers, when, you've, when you signed up to follow Jesus, the mantra was less of him, less of me, more of him. But it's been more of you and less of him. Well, I just want to make sure I keep an aesthetic that is pleasing to both the believer and non-believer. They're crying out. Your art was a bridge to the Savior. And you've made the art the end goal. You've made whatever you sell the end goal. You've made however you look and however you dress and you'll come. You've made that the end goal. And God said, the only reason I bless that is so it would draw people who don't know me. So you don't expect and you don't anticipate. The truth of the matter is, Elijah does all of this for Ahab. I want you to see like all the king was doing was eaten. He was at a party. <sighs> While the person that God tasked with the, with the faith assignment was on Mount Carmel praying, had to convince and give vision to a servant to go look this many times. As soon as he saw the cloud the size of a man's hand, get excited, go back and send word to the party. I know you don't care about this. And I know you haven't sacrificed for this. But my faith wasn't for me. My faith was to make sure you didn't get stuck here. So Ahab, get in the chariot, get all your stuff and go. Because if you don't, the rain that's about to come is going to stop you here. All the faith was for somebody else. What happens? When God calls us to live by faith, but it's not just for us. I hear that mantra that Jesus told the disciples. He said, um, the field is ripe. The harvest is everywhere, but the laborers are few. He's telling the disciples this, who probably had lost a little bit of their faith. They didn't have a fresh perspective. They looking at all these people and like, Jesus, we just trying to keep them away from you. And he's like, y'all, do y'all see what's around here? It's just a bunch of harvest. 
but there's nobody to actually have the faith to believe that they can be transformed. And then look what he does. He tells the disciples, pray to the Lord of the harvest. He's sitting with them. He's probably a little mad. He probably a little ticked off. Yeah, why don't y'all you, like prayer, don't you? Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send more laborers. That he would send more people with a fresh perspective. That he would send people with faith to believe that I can transform anybody. And instead of being like, hold on, we can believe like that. They're probably like, Lord, and then Lord, would you sin? And he was like, just go do it. Be the answered prayer. Stop praying that somebody else would come. And you show up. Pastor Mike, what are you saying? God's about to give us fresh face for everything in our life. And you're going to have to have a fresh perspective. You're going to have to set reminders. I'm telling you, this week, some of y'all need to set reminders on your phone. I will live and not die. Every morning you wake up, I will live and not die. You dealt with suicide in a different season. And the fact that you're here right now, you should be reminding yourself, I'm still here. I will live and not die. Somebody else needs to set a reminder. I'm actually going to live pure today. The days the enemy robbed in perversion and thoughts, you can literally remind yourself that keeps fresh faith. And you're going to get a fresh expectation. And then you're going to upgrade that thing to a fresh anticipation. Today's the day. Oh, shoot. Today's the day. Standing all over this place. Y'all actually did it. Y'all actually gave me my extra 15 minutes. Thank y'all. Would you just please lift your hands? Because I, I want to pray for every person. Listen to me. Everybody listen. Whose faith has been tired. If your faith has been tired. I'm not saying that you didn't have faith in a different season and God, but if your faith has been tired, would you lift your hands all over this building? Yeah, it was the right message today. Come on, online. If your faith has been tired. Everybody, don't, don't, don't leave this moment without getting what you need. I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you today that you are renewing strength. That, Father God, where some of us have been at the party, <laughs> we're about to find ourselves in your presence. Father, I thank you that you're reminding us of your faithfulness today and you're doing a work on the inside of us, Father, that nobody else could do, just you. Today, God, would you give us the ability to believe you like never before? Father, we've been hurt. We've been disappointed. Some of us have seen great victories, Father God, but today we're making a fresh commitment to come to you and ask you for another measure of faith. Your word says that you give measures of faith. God, would you increase our measure of faith? Would you give us fresh faith to believe you for our families? Believe you for the words you've spoken. Believe us for the transform. Believe you for the transformation. Believe you for the salvation. Believe you for our children. Believe you for our neighbors. Believe you for what you've called us to do today. I thank you that Transformation Church moves from a church that just has crazy faith and expectation. But God, let's move into actually being able to, to, to make actions of faith. Let us live in anticipation of what you're going to do. Let it change our posture. Today, God, we trust you. And I thank you, Father, that we're moving this week. Father, would you give us a boldness this week that never goes away? To be able to know that what you're doing in our life is not just for us. Would you give us the boldness to invite the person at Starbucks and the barista, Father God, and the waiter and our cousins and our family and our friends, not just to Easter, Father God, but to a meeting with you. Father, let our faith move beyond us. I thank you for a mobilized church. A church that doesn't sit back and wait, but we'll go and we'll have the faith to go seven times to see if you're doing anything. Father, we might not see much, but we see something. God, I just thank you that this church will always be the one that believes in the cloud. Today, have your way is our prayer. If you're in this room and you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, today I just want to let you know that the greatest decision that you could make is to make him the Lord of your life, not just your Savior, listen to me, but your Lord. And if that's you, all over this room, watching online, there's hundreds every Sunday. And today, today, today is the day of salvation for you. 
I need the church to begin to pray. There are people that have been walking away from God, who have been lost, who have been confused, that have been shunned from the church. And today God is saying, I'm calling you back home. No matter where you are, today is the start of fresh faith for you. Huh? And God is the only one that if you give him your heart, he'll help you change your habits. In this room, all over the building right now, if you want to give your life to Christ on the count of three, I just want you to slip your hand in the air. You don't have to confess everything that you've done to me or somebody else. Hopefully you get in a tribe to do that. Hopefully you get healing when you begin to confess one to another. But today I'm talking about your eternity being secure and you starting with a fresh faith. If you're in this room or if you're watching online or if somebody's playing this in a rebroadcast, I feel the presence of God right now. This is your moment of salvation. One, you're making the greatest decision you've ever made. Two, I'm proud of you but more than that your name is going to be written in the lamb's book of life and god will change you from being somebody like me who is addicted to pornography a liar a manipulator and he won't make you perfect but he'll make you progressing and i'm telling you today god is going to transform your life three if that's you you shoot your hand up in the air i see you my brother i see you my sister i see you my sister come on every age every demographic transformation church this is what we celebrate i see you brother Hey, put your hands down because now you're a part of a community of everybody who's walking in the level of transparency that you are. And we're a family here. Nobody prays alone. Everybody just say, God, thank you for giving me fresh faith. Today, I believe in Jesus. I believe he lived, he died, and he rose again with all power just for me. I give you my life. Change me. Renew me, transform me. I'm yours in Jesus' name, amen. Transformation Church, how do we celebrate? Oh, come on, y'all. It's a fresh faith in this place. This morning, we want you to do us. Thank you so much for watching this message. We pray that it encouraged you. Our vision is to represent God to the lost and found for transformation in Christ. And if you would like to partner with us in giving, you can text GIVE to 828282 or visit us on our website. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other sermons as well. Our service begins every Sunday at 1045 a.m. Central Standard Time. Now go out and live a transformed life.